it's everywhere. Philanthropy is everywhere. And it's just that it's not named that. And secondly, I have talked about it wherever it's been um, in the sense of the understanding of how we care for others in a society and how we engage with others, uh, what we would define as philanthropically. Um, I believe those traditions are just different in different places in the world, but they're all there. And there is the same universal interest in um, caring for one's fellow uh, beings in a society. This is so true from uh, from Africa and Namibia, where I spent some time, to Japan when, you know, teaching in the public school and just getting, getting under, educating what the name was and then how readily sixth graders identified all of their philanthropic acts that they were doing. Uh, they just weren't calling it that. And um, most recently, you know, the China experience is so uh, evident again in how it's emerging in the broader definition of the word here. And the experience that they're having in dealing with what we would say the modern foundation movement um, and what that means for them now that they have uh, a wealthy class. Um, it's very, you know, I, I was uh, meeting with a student from China uh, yesterday who's doing her, I'm on her dissertation committee, and she's looking at the role of the entrepreneur in China and establishing of corporate foundations in particular. And the uh, uh, the feeling that they have in terms of why they're giving, it's, it sounds just like the point of time going back in history when Rockefeller was trying to set up his foundation and the you know U.S. Congress rejected him. And uh, so he had to go about doing this in New York and the attitude of the people of how what a wicked man he was. <laughs> you know, it, it's just like the Chinese are now, the wealthy Chinese, are having that same feeling in their country. That is, the people think they're evil and, you know, 